Hello, my name is Sierra Paniwa Felicidad, and today I have um, Linda what's her name? Menard, Menard um, from Pine Ridge, and um, she's an elder that we all respect, you know, um, and many women respect and honor her, and we're going to ask her some questions about, um, you know, conservation of culture, traditions, and sacred relations to our earth. Um, this is for you know the younger generations as well as the women and uh, Song for Native Nations. Um, I'm the director of the herbal department for uh, Rena Brown's um, Sewing for Native Nations nonprofit organization, and we're going to be um, educating, helping educate the women also who sew for her. Um, you know a little bit about the culture, so they're aware and. And they have that information for their heart, you know, and, um, and the way they live. Um, and you can introduce yourself if you want. Okay. My name is Linda Menard, and I am an Ogalasu Lakota member of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And um, I live in this little town or community um, by the name of Batesland. And it is part of the Wakbamni District. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's on the far southeastern end of the Pine Ridge Reservation. It's a small town, about 108 people. Mm -hmm. nice. And could you tell the people, you know, um, what it is that you do for your own community and help you cons help conserve the culture, and you know what what you do with the youth and the nonprofit that you also help take care of. Okay, um, in 2016, we started a nonprofit, and we had a hard time naming it. And we couldn't decide on the name that was appropriate to call it, that would incorporate uh, the youth being part of it and being the center of it. So what we did was we we, we played around with a few names and. Uh, we wanted it to be a Lakota name as well. Mm -hmm. And so with that, I would ask uh, elders, um, what does this word mean? What does this other word mean? Does it, does it go together? Because in our language, the words are, are backwards, it seems like. And then you try to piece it together, it has a different meaning. So, mm -hmm. And in the end, we came up with the name, but uh, it's called Techa. Which means Center for Health in the Youth. Mm -hmm. And so, with that, um, we started in 2016. And it's been a real slow process, of course. Um, it's not really a fast moving uh, youth center at the moment. I'm hoping in time that it will grow and we will attract more young people and they would be interested in the culture and the language and learning the, mm -hmm. the ways of the ancestors, you know, and how our ancestors lived back then, you know, and, and what did they use, you know, mm -hmm. and what types of um, medicines did they, you know, use to treat the sicknesses that they had. And of course, um, that's real interesting to me as well because I am, uh, coming from my mother is Genevieve Underhawk, okay, and she is real fluent in the Lakota language. And growing up, um, I was born and raised in Texas. Growing up in a, a, a family of bilingual, I guess, mm -hmm. we were never taught that Lakota, or we were never taught the Spanish language. Mm -hmm. uh, so. It's all been a learning process for me as well, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm growing with the kids, and and I'm hoping they're going to grow with us as well. Mm. That's so beautiful. That's really nice. You know, it's really important that the children are cared for in a loving, compassionate way by, you know, a good, healthy role model. And, um, so. Because you live in, on near the Pine Ridge Reservation, 
over there. And when you talk to people who may be considered outsiders of um, that community, is there a certain way you go about introducing or you know explaining uh, cultural appropriation and respect for cultural manners when you know when they're in your presence? Even are you talking about the non-Indian? Yeah. Yes. Well, um, you know, Heinrich's Reservation. We get a lot of tourists that come through there. Mm. And they, some of them try to learn the respect of going to a sweat lodge or going to the Sundance. And they don't want to violate or, mm -hmm. or disrespect, you know, the ways. And some, they come to um, take pictures, maybe sell it, you know, whatever the case may be. And so, you know, a lot of us don't really see because they will hide those cameras in like bags or you know oh wow places that yeah. we don't see and so they yes. take pictures of the ceremony mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yes but if we do see that then of course we are going to say something you know it's not appropriate to do that because you put your camera away mm -hmm. you know because a lot of the non-indians they don't know they don't know all of the ways they may have read something in a book, or they have maybe read something in a pamphlet, you know, how to conduct themselves in the ceremonies. But when they're actually there, they may not do it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of tolerance, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. um, and, but with that, you know, there are, I feel like there are, like, the, the outsiders who really do have a compassionate heart. And they are trying to help, like, with the Sewing for Native Nations is a, a non-profit that helps sew masks, thousands and thousands of masks for Native Nations across Turtle Island since the pandemic. And a lot of these women, they happen to be European descent, so they're doing their best, right? And, and we honor that. And, and we're really grateful for those women. And, but I'm sure, be, you know, giving back to the Native Nations and, you know, doing that good deed, they must in some way in their heart, mind, spirit, they must have like an interest in the culture a little bit. And so thank you for sharing, you know, the appropriate things if they were to ever go to a ceremony or be invited even, you know, um, how to go about that and not take pictures and, you know, and be respectful of, like, yeah, it's really, really humble, I feel. And, um, and so we see, like, a lot of native-made beadwork being sold and worn by many across the world. And what do you feel is the significance of each piece of regalia that someone chooses to wear or is gifted? Is there, you know, how, how do you feel about that? Well, um, of course, let's, let's say for instance, a, a young lady may have gotten earrings, maybe earrings from maybe her grandmother, mm -hmm. you know, or maybe um, she received a necklace, a beaded necklace, you know. And, and, you know, every one of those things is their choice, you know, what do they want to wear? You know, what each piece plays a significant role in the person's regalia and what they wear and what they dance for, you know. So I, I believe it's, it's really important. But personally, I love quill work. That's quill my, work. I love quill work. That's my, that's yeah. my best, my passion is quill work. Yeah. You do that a lot? I don't quill work. You don't quill it, no, but you like. I love it. Yes. <laughs> you love the mm -hmm. work after me. It's real. I love the work. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, just a, a recap too, like never to touch someone's regalia, right? Yes. Well, you know, when you think about the bead work, it was it's, it's not ours. You know, mm. beads came in the trade. Yeah. You know, a long yeah. time ago, and so. But you know, of course, our people perfect what they what they make. Mm. They can perfect anything that they can, you know, 
they can sew, for instance, you know, mm. or put together in arts and crafts. And it's amazing what our people can do. Yeah, true artists, I, mm -hmm. I definitely really feel. Really true artists. And so sewing has been a sacred tradition for some time. Like you said, it comes with the trade that came. You know, I don't know if they always had a needle and <laughs> a pin, right? Or like a needle and thread. Um, but I guess they would use like sinew, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, in some way. Yes. So there was, you know, some type of like sewing that was being done. And from sewing dresses to ribbon skirts and even sewing moccasins with sinew, can you give some insight on why it's important to have a clean, energetic space when sewing or creating traditional ceremonial items, but not even traditional ceremonial items, the, that mask, you know, that mm -hmm. is being worn, that's a protection. Mm -hmm. And to, to make those masks in a good, energetic space, like why, why do you feel that is important for people? Well... Well, in regards to the masks, they're for protection. Mm -hmm. And so the women that are sewing it, I'm sure they have good energies because I don't think they would be doing it because, you know, and they're all volunteering. Yeah. You know, they're volunteers. And so, you know, it takes a lot for somebody to want to volunteer and continue to keep doing it. And so in the thousands of masks that have been sewn by sewing for Native nations. Mm -hmm. I really think that's important. Your energy plays a lot. It says a lot about you as well. Mm. So. Yeah, and the intention with every, mm -hmm. like, with every sew, with every bead, it's like mm -hmm. a, a good intention. Right? Yes, it is. And could you, can you see a difference in the way that the culture was preserved now and how it's being uplifted now in comparison to the 80s and 90s or when it first became legalized do you see would you say there's a difference yes there's a difference um, you know nowadays I I think that there's there's a market where things are mass made when back then they were made with pride mm. So you're, yeah, you're saying because the exploitation and maybe like things becoming a commodity, right. it could change the like the way that our culture is being expressed. Right, right. right. I see. And even like what it means to be native, right? Like, what would you say the biggest difference in the 80s and 90s, like even the 70s, right, in comparison to now? Would you say there's a difference in the way that people take pride in their culture? In, in our culture, you know. I mean, I wasn't around in that time, but I could, like, for me, being a young indigenous person, it's like there there could be a lot of anger and things that we're holding on to, and that represents of what being indigenous can mean to us. But but there's also that anger, maybe because there was so much shame, and and now it's we're finally stepping into it, right? We're finally stepping into honoring that that lineage and being proud of it and standing up and do you see a big difference in the way things played out like I think back then it wasn't as uh, mass as it is now mm -hmm. because you know our reservation for instance there is like I was told 60 plus sun dances you know and not everybody yeah. is together yeah. You know, not everybody is one, you know, like a whole nation, you know, where, you know, you, well, there's a sun dance over here, there's a sun dance over here, you know, maybe you're not allowed over there. I mean, it's, it's, it's really sad. You know, wow. But, but back yeah. then, it seems like um, they were all focused on, on trying to make a difference in our people's lives and for our, in our children's lives mm -hmm. you know they were the American Indian movement for instance yeah. coming you know and that tells you a lot right there yeah. you know of what they were trying to accomplish you know mm -hmm. so there was so much division you know and, and so much um, oppression mm. and you know we we don't want to see those types of things nowadays but we know that they're there you know so but you know, we don't want to judge people, you know, as long as people are 
paying. Mm -hmm. You know, the praying, and that that's really something. Mm -hmm. I really believe that a prayer is the most important thing that you can even ever give anybody as a prayer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's awesome. I mean, and it just reminds me, too, that, like, yeah, what it means to be indigenous is, like, we're prayful people. Mm -hmm. Sacred. Right. right, right. Thank you for that. Um, what do you hope to see in the future in the ways of preserving culture and cultural cultural identity? What would you hope to see for the future generations? And you know, is there a message you would like to say to the future generations and people my age at all? I'm trying to think of a quote that we had in one of our. Um in our youth here um, program, um, everyone is important. Mm. Everyone is important. Be proud of your identity. Be proud of who you are. Mm -hmm. Every one of you matters. And we always talk about that. Every one of everybody matters. Mm -hmm. Okay, our children matter. The ones that are coming up. They're going to make a big difference. I know they are. Yeah? Yes. I feel it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the spark, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, one thing with our young people, too, you know, we do have a lot of them that are, um, they don't really know what's happening out there. Like, okay, why do we, why do we want to protect the water? You know, why mm -hmm. do we want to protect our land? Why do we want our land back? Mm -hmm. You know? Why do we need to burn the trees? Yeah. Why, you know, all of these things that are out here that uh, should be, um, I mean, we want these young people to learn all of that, you know, because they're our next in line. You know, you're our next in line. And I see that you have a passion for, for um, all of that. I seen you, I heard you in Sweat Lodge last night. I, I can I can feel that feel that energy that you have in your voice that I wanna make a difference. I wanna make a difference and, mm -hmm. and I wanna show our youth that we can make a difference. Mm -hmm. And that's how I, I felt you I felt that energy that you that you were giving out. And it's real good. I feel like yeah, getting, getting people interested, you know, instead, yes. of, instead of what they're portraying to, to get back to the roots, you know, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter what you look like, it doesn't matter what people perceive you like, it's like, how do you feel in your spirit, how do you feel in your heart, how are mm -hmm. we going to take that love, you know, we have for earth and the passion that we have for uh environmental activism and and fuel our own healing so then once we heal we can help heal our family lineage and then we can also once we're you know in this progress of learning how to self like give ourselves love and self-respect then we can be an example and then that is the main fuel to make a change in the difference we can't go backwards right we can't go oh we're gonna we're gonna make a change, but we don't know how to love ourselves. It's like, you know, how do we move forward like that? And so, it's a beautiful balance, progress, and um, I'm excited to see. Because mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're out there, I know they are. Mm -hmm. they yes, they are. We have, have, we have some that are out there, of course we do. And then now let's get the rest of them interested. Mm -hmm. you know. How do we do that? How do we accomplish that? You know, little by little, you know, because there is a lot of other native nonprofits out there, and, and they're all trying. You know, they're all trying. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like it needs that opportunity, so we have to align to those different opportunities. And yes. Do you have like a dream that you have in mind for your own self that you would? like to share, maybe just to inspire someone for their own life as well, too, you know, um, and we're talking about 
that herbal garden. Do you have? Oh, that was my dream. You know, I was trying to get at least two acres. You know, no more than that. If I can get more, I would love it. But as a start. I want to do a medicinal garden, you know, of our plants and, and of our our medicines that we use back home, mm -hmm. you know, because they've been overpicked, or they're being picked by the roots. They're not being taken the right way, you know. They're not um, offering because when you take, you give back. So, mm -hmm. and that's one thing that we we want to preserve what we have what little we have left there on our reservation. Uh, for instance, you know, we're, we're losing our choke cherry trees. Maybe we're losing our our, um, uh, our sage. Yeah. We were picked. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, things like that. Or, or what was the other one now? Plum trees. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just the things that grow by the water is like our medicines. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why we talk about we, we we need our water. We gotta have our water, mm -hmm. and that is what helps our medicines grow. Mm -hmm. The one, what we need. Yeah. We might have to pray for a lot of water. Yes. Even if we don't like the rain, we have to say thank you. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. For instance, we saw earlier you know, on our little trip to, you know, behind the. Uh, is it now to right down the road to go pick sage we saw that we didn't hardly get that much rain this year and so the plants aren't mm -hmm. as abundant mm -hmm. or, or, or not as tall as we want them to be mm -hmm. you know but i think it's time that you know they're going to start seeding here and we just have to leave them so Eventually, they'll hopefully come back. And if not, maybe there's nonprofits out there who will drop a lot of sage seeds. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like there's so many cool things that could be developed. I can't, like, that would be so amazing. And to ban, you know, maybe even spraying the fields because that could maybe affect the, the, the growth of those medicines as well, too, with those big sprayers and those big. Uh, airplanes, but True. Um, anything else you would like to encourage uh, the people about? Well, I mean, there's a there's so much that we can do uh, to encourage our young people, but you know, I think that you know when we have this nonprofit that's for you, okay. I think our youth is the one who are going to bring another youth. And then they're mm. going to bring another youth. And then they're going to bring somebody else. And, and I think that's where that movement is. Mm -hmm. It's with our youth. Mm -hmm. to bring them. Because they may like, you know, what, they, what they're learning. And they're going to bring somebody. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yes, that's, to me, that's encouraging just to have that dream, you know, have that thought in mind and that, you know, one day we're going to have a lot of our youth and they're going to, they're going to uh, fight for us in a good way. <laughs> I'm gonna think. Um, and, okay, so one last question is, if anyone is of European descent, um, what would be the most appropriate way to support indigenous people? through this time of, you know, reoccurring trauma and heartbreak. We want to be honest about that with the children coming back and the children being found and having to be put to rest again with those bundles and honoring that process. And, you know, if, if someone is watching and they're of European descent and they, you know, they want to support and, you know, how, how, would, they, how would they do that? Well, we had a couple here, you know, that I guess uh, met Fred through his father many years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, they love our ways, you know, even read the songs, you know, some of